We've all experienced intense change and significant moments that define our lives. But what you may or may not know is that astrology is one of the best tools for making sense of these transformational periods. We can track transits to anticipate, interpret, and navigate those times in life where it feels like our world gets turned completely upside down. We call these game-changing transits because that's exactly what they are. Fateful moments in life when literally everything changes and life is never the same again. Hi, my name is Amanda Poole Walsh and I'm the founder of Astrology Hub. And on today's short special edition episode of the Astrology Hub podcast, you're going to hear from a beautiful constellation of professional astrologers, inner circle astrology students, and even some of the team members here at Astrology Hub. You're going to hear their stories about their personal, most life-changing transits. This episode is designed to give you a taste of what a game-changing transit is, what it's like to live through one, and most importantly, how people feel on the other side of a transit that changes everything. So with that said, let's get to it. Game-changing transit is coming up very soon. I'm Ari Moshe Wolf. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. I'm one of 12 passionate and lovely astrologers that are coming together for this two-day panel. We'll talk about the most pivotal and essential life-changing transits that happen for all of us throughout our entire life. I, in particular, will be focusing on the Saturn cycles. So check it out and join us, astrologyhub.com slash game-changing. The most life-changing transit I've had is Pluto crossing my Sun-Saturn conjunction. You don't want to do that twice in one lifetime. And it hurts at first, but uh, I came through it and my whole life did change. I started out being one person and ended up on the other side of the transit in a completely new space, in a new landscape although I was absolutely in the same zip code that I had been all for most of my adult life. Pluto, it just demands a transformation from the inside out. And that is why it's associated with evolution because I certainly evolved on that transit. Wow. There've been several. I think the most life-changing one was the first time Saturn went over my ascendant. And that was when I was about 21 or 22 years of age. And it was, it was pretty brutal for me. Physically, it was pretty brutal. I had a, a major staph infection all over my body. For a long time, I didn't know it was a staph infection. I had to separate from my family. I left uh, Illinois where I was born and I moved to California. That was probably the biggest life-changing event of my life, I would say. It changed me completely. Oh, gosh, there's probably been very many, but one that resonates with me right now is when I had my Chiron return in my house of partnerships in my seventh house. I realized I had been in a very long marriage that had seemed very sated in some aspects, but that it needed to end and I needed to go a different direction in my marriage, in my life. It was very profound for me. It took a big turn in my life at that point. What was the most life-changing transit I've ever had? There are many candidates that I would say it was an eclipse activation during a nodal return window. Right? The lunar nodes, the points where from Earth we see the paths of the sun and the moon cross, are the places that host eclipses. So when we're in these nodal return processes that come around every 18 and a half years, Eclipses are perhaps more active. And so I was in my second nodal return at 37 years old, and there was a total solar eclipse within six arc minutes of my Scorpio North Node. And I received my first ever astrology reading a couple days later. And uh, the astrologer had mentioned that I was in a Pluto square Pluto transit, and I was in a Saturn square Saturn transit. 
And I was in this nodal return window, but didn't say anything about during the nodal return, there was this total solar eclipse right on your north node like two days ago. Anyway, I ended up taking a transits class with that astrologer. And um, during the transmissions, I was just kind of charting out all these transits as I was learning how to do it in like real time and learned that I was in like 13 transits at once. And they, they were significant. The Pluto square Pluto, the Saturn square Saturn, this nodal return thing. Uranus was squaring my Mars. Uh, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> okay? And I did. And I created this whole board of all these transits and like an artistic expression of it to try to help me understand like if you have all these different things happening at the same time, like what is what is the story that together they're trying to tell? I mean, that's the art of of the chart. That's the job of the astrologer. There's always more than one thing, especially once we start learning more techniques, progressions and directions, etc. Right. But how can we look at all these, as I like to say, all these individual ingredients and all the ingredients matter. But, you know, what is the stew that you're cooking up for the time? So it's hard to really put my finger on it was exactly that transit or is exactly that transit because I know of enough astrology to see that there's never just one thing. But given that that time was my initiation into astrology and that I shortly after actually became a, a, an astrologer and then a professional astrologer and it just changed my life's course, it was an eclipse activation during what I call a nodal return window. It was the eclipse season. I had my nodal returns and the eclipses were mine. And as Adam Summer was our monthly guide and he helped us to join a dragon hole. And I realized that these eclipses were really my chance to get a part of me back out of trauma. In the middle of the eclipses, I sang myself into this traumatic ex experience and brought myself back. So it was like touching the bottom of my life and recording a song while I was shaking off the trauma and came out with a song and with myself in, in a healed way. So it was this this time, the nodal return and the eclipses in 22. My most life-changing transit is always the last one. <laughs> I just went to a second through a second Saturn return, and uh, that I can say has been life-changing. And I'm now go going through a major Uranus transit, which is also life-changing. <laughs> So again, I don't have a single answer because every major transit I am talking about outer planet brings an enormous and incredible deepening and expansion. So unfortunately, can't pinpoint any single one. My Saturn return totally changed my life. I really thought I had it all together. I was working my first, you know, full-time grown-up job at a nonprofit. I was living alone in a beautiful apartment that I still miss. And it felt like I was finally getting the hang of things, but I wasn't happy. It didn't feel right. And so my Saturn return was in Capricorn in the fifth house. And it was like Saturn came in and was like, but what about your joy? What about your creativity? What about what lights you up? Like, what is life really about? And it manifested as like a total breakdown, total disaster. But it was such a gift in the long run. Now I'm a few years out from that point, And I'm so glad that I didn't stay in that situation just because I thought that I was supposed to. Um, prioritizing joy in my life has really made a huge difference. Well, um, one was an, the first North Node return. We have our North Node in the first house and South Node in the seventh house, meaning we're born in relationship and we had to learn how to individuate. And that was... The first time that ever happened was the first time that 
Tali and I spent time apart. She went to California for the summer and I stayed home in Detroit. And in that time, she actually won a contest, got flown to New York City uh, to put together an, uh, an issue of Sassy magazine that was the best teen magazine on the market in the 80s. And, uh, and later I ended up joining in that. But she discovered this whole new pathway on her own, whereas we had always done everything together. And uh, that was a big one for me. And it did benefit us both. That's funny. I was going to say that, too. So I'll go with the other one, which was our Saturn return, which we have Saturn retrograde and Gemini in the fifth house. That was when we got our first astrology column at Teen People. So we kind of went right into boot camp there. We had to write a his and hers daily seven day a week column all throughout that Saturn return. We were writing, 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 went all summer long, sitting in the at the beach in a chair with our laptops, whatever. So it uh -huh. really trained us in, you know, the discipline that we use to this day to rank out as much content as we do. My most life-changing transit is definitely Pluto, Lord of the Underworld, and my 12th house, the house of self-undoing. When he entered my 12th house, I was a corporate Go getter. I worked hard and partied even harder. When he entered my 12th house, I was then diagnosed with breast cancer, which was definitely um, a big Pluto kick up the butt to transform. It was a pivotal moment. And when I think about the self undoing, that is transformation. And it's like a when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, it goes into that in-between state in the chrysalis where it's completely deconstructed. It's no longer the caterpillar and it's certainly not yet butterfly. I feel being in the middle of this transit, Pluto won't be out of my 12th house until 2032. So I'm only just approaching halfway. I've had a huge amount of transformation. I ditched my corporate life. I am now embracing being an artist. I've created an energetic art form that is connected to healing. And yeah, the self before Pluto entered my 12th house and the self after are definitely very different. And you could say that is a form of self I'm doing. I think my the most life-changing transit for me would have to be when Pluto went over my moon. So it went over my moon, uh, went back. Then it went over. The first time it went over, I had a child. I had dead birth. Then it went back. Then it went over, and I had dead birth again. So exact. So my daughters both have Pluto at the same degree on my moon. Um, I also had a very interesting experience uh, because the first time I met my husband, and my moon is in Sagittarius in the ninth house. So, of course, I've been every religion um, you can think of in my life. Uh, I was brought up. Presbyterian, but then I wanted to be Mormon because my family, part of my family and friends. So for years I wanted to be Mormon, so I attended um, the Mormon church. Um, I went to Catholic school, then I became a Rastafarian when I was 12. Um, then I became Buddhist. And then so when Pluto went over my Sagittarius moon of the ninth, my husband I met my husband. I thought I could never be culture shocked, but he was Muslim Indian. And of course I was very, very culture shocked. So that was um, interesting. And of course, Pluto on the moon, um, you know, uh, I, we had a few challenges in the house. We had um, a, a pest infestation, as Pluto on the moon would do. Uh, we had, we got burgled uh, with Pluto on the moon. And I had to identify a peeping Tom in the community because I was the only one who could, because I was the only one who saw him properly. So that would have to be one of my life changing. You know, um, Pluto of my moon. So one of my most life-changing transits was Uranus, the great awakener, conjuncting my sun and my ninth house of spiritual seeking in my mid-20s. And I wasn't tracking astrology at this time, but going back and looking, I can see how that really catalyzed my spiritual awakening. And the way Uranus works is Uranus can bring destabilization to catalyze us to break through and break free to living more 
authentically, truthfully, and freely. And I can see how it was this transit that brought a lot of destabilization to my life and to the security that I had tried to build my life on. And it really led me to my spiritual awakening and on my journey of spiritual seeking that ultimately led to me living a much more liberated and magical life and led me to my path of astrology. Pluto conjunct my son, my natal son. That was one of the most life-changing transits I've ever had. It lasted a couple of years and it completely transformed my life. I went from, you know, some astrologers on here, uh, Ann Ortley and others have said it's sort of like the caterpillar who goes into the cocoon and becomes a butterfly. Others say it's a total meltdown. Uh, and then the rebuilding or the phoenix that is reborn. And I like to say it's a glow up because that's what it feels. It feels like, you know, I feel more confident now. I feel a lot more clarity after my Pluto transit. I feel a lot more energy, but it also has to do with some other things that were going on in my chart at the same time. And so it wasn't really until I had my progressed new moon, which isn't really a transit, it's a different timing technique that I felt the Pluto leaving my son really was taking effect because you have to look at the moon cycles in order to know what kind of energy you have available to you at any given time. And for me, I was in a balsamic progress moon phase for most of that Pluto over my sun transit, which meant everything was composting at an accelerating rate. And once I had that progress new moon, the empowerment aspect of the Pluto conjunct my sun really kicked in and allowed me to sort of what Brene Brown says, to have a strong back, a soft front, and a wild heart. The transit that changed everything for me was in 2018, Venus retrograde in Scorpio. Venus retrograde in Scorpio can be an intense transit, but I have a natal moon in Scorpio, so this transit hit me very personally in places in my chart that were very sensitive. So this brought, Venus retrograde in Scorpio brought to the surface a lot of things in my relationships that I had known about, but wasn't really, I didn't really want to deal with them. And it brought everything to the surface. It made me see things that I hadn't really been willing to look at and really made me consider how I value myself in relationships, what I bring to the table in relationships, what I'm willing to tolerate in relationships, uh, and just really seeing some power dynamics very clearly. And that clarity while challenging in the moment really helped me become who I am today. So while it was really challenging, I look back at that time in my life and I think, wow, this is where it all began. Because had I not gone through this challenging time, had I not gone through this with my family and had to really discuss some really uncomfortable things, our relationships would be very different as well. So while it's challenging and everything changed in that moment, and if you were to put me back in that place, I wouldn't want to be there. I'm really grateful that it happened. And it's funny because this is how big transits work. When you're not willing to look at something, when you're not willing to deal with it, often the planets will bring it to the surface and ask you to heal it and ask you to integrate it. And that's exactly what happened for me. And I wouldn't change a thing. I'm really, really grateful for the lessons, for the growth, and for the perspective. One was Pluto conjoined to my son. And that was also when my mom passed away. Um, and as you can see behind me, she's still in my heart. Um, but it's not just losing my mom. It, I think, prompted um, a, a searching, a, a deepening in my relationship to life um, and being willing to explore that. I think my relationship to spirituality deepened because it had fallen away during that time. So Pluto conjoined to the sun would be up there. And I think the other one would be, and I've spent a lot of time talking about it, including on Astrology Hub, has been Jupiter, my, my second Jupiter return. So my second Jupiter return brought um, astrology into my life. It brought an astrologer and my curiosity, and I guess that became my life path. 
My most life-changing transit was definitely when Uranus conjunct my natal moon. I kid you not, the day that Uranus hit Taurus, it was entering, I think, my 12th house at that time, and my moon is at 6 degrees. I broke it off with someone that I needed to break off with a long time. I feel like the whole relationship was like, it started off with like just water that you put on a stove, and then it starts to boil, and I feel like the day that I broke it off when Uranus hit my 12th house was the day that the water was like at a full boil and like I had to turn off the stove. Like it was that type of situation. And it, honestly, that transit was very difficult for me. I feel like my emotions were so chaotic. It was literally like textbook Uranus conjunct moon. Like I had no control over anything I felt like in my life. Everything was just like going wrong. Like I just felt like I was so emotionally unstable and it was actually ended up being really, really good for me because I think it actually is what propelled me into like really, really like trying to understand astrology because I feel like it was like such a guiding force at that time. And then also it just taught me so much about me, like in how I experience other people and I just learned so much. And even though it was really difficult, I feel like I'll never put myself in that position and that relationship that I was in before and now I'm so much more like emotionally mature and like I'm able to express myself way better than I ever was before so you know Uranus can be Uranus can be a rough one but you know with everything that comes with a challenge it always comes with like such a huge gift at the end when you live long enough you and you study astrology you begin to understand that what astrology and what life is is an unfolding flower, to use a, a, an analogy, that you go through a life-changing event when you're in your 20s, and you think, oh my God, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And then in 28, 29, you go through your Saturn return, and your whole perspective changes. And then in your 30s, you're going to have other experiences, and in your 40s, and so on. Well, when people get older, and it's not even a matter of age, but sometimes people have a point of view, they're on a path, and something will upset their life. Divorce, they lose their house, they get sick. And they go through an extended period where they're challenged. But they get over it, and they move on. And their whole perspective on life is so different. And I've seen this so many times with my clients and my friends. And so... What I believe is that as life unfolds for you, whatever the next challenge is, whatever the next thing that the universe is offering you is a chance to grow and be a better person. So I don't think there's any one aspect in my life that I would say had the most effect, picking just one out, a little more difficult. When you're younger, you can say, wow, when I was 18, this happened to me. But when you're 60, uh, you say, oh, my God, let me think about that. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to these stories as much as I did. And if you want to learn more about transits like these, do not worry. This is only the beginning. We invite you to join us for our free upcoming event, The Game Changing Transits, and what they mean for you. This is where you can learn from 12 astrology teachers who will be our inner circle astrologer guides for the upcoming 12 months. You can tune into this program completely for free, and they're going to be discussing the most powerful transits that are coming up in the near future for all of us collectively, and also the most significant personal life-changing transits that we all go through in a lifetime. Don't miss this opportunity to understand these cosmic rhythms better and harness their transformative power. You can sign up for free at astrologyhub.com slash game changing. We're also going to put the link for that event in the description of this show. The event is happening March 22nd and 23rd. And even if you can't make it live, make sure you register so that we know to send you the recording. Again, that's astrologyhub.com slash game changing. Thank you for tuning into this episode, for being a part of our community. And as always, for making astrology a part of your life. We'll catch you at the Game Changing Transits event.